Well, I'd say that one thing that uh, music does in terms of involving young people is uh, kinds of levels that take place in terms of intellectual and personal development. There are things uh, that music contributes to in terms of development of self-image, self-awareness, um, the ability to understand oneself uh, can be can come out of kinds of uh, deep musical experiences because those experiences are not simply the music making itself but a whole set of social things that take place along with that music making that uh, uh, contribute to the development of an individual in the social setting. In addition, you know, there are kind of leadership qualities that emerge as students are involved with that. There have been lots of studies that are cited that, that talk about how uh, students who are involved in music making itself in, in educational settings actually do better academically in other subjects. And that's certainly a strong argument. Uh, I would point to uh, some of the studies that have shown that in, in early years, in formative years, uh, there is a great deal of evidence to suggest that the brain develops differently for uh, young people who are involved in music making as opposed to simply listening to music. So that that involvement in making music and in expressing oneself through music actually makes a different brain. And if I wanted to go out on a limb uh, about what I think is involved in that, is that music on one level is one of the uh, most uh, involved types of abstract thinking that we have as a species, you know, and that we often don't think of it that way. But it's abstract thinking and abstract uh, kind of anticipation of proportion of uh, sound itself. Those things contribute to how the brain uh, grows. Now the studies that we have have to do with, with infancy and early childhood, but the fact of the matter is that the brain continues to grow and develop, and uh, we haven't really done studies to try and see how would it affect an adult population or how does it affect uh, you know, adolescent populations. But brain development goes on always. It's not like it stops, you know. And so there is that aspect. Also, you know, we've found that um, in, in research that uh, people who have learning uh, disabilities, who have learning problems, uh, often can use music as a way of establishing new paths in the brain to overcome some of these dis disabilities. So that's another area that I think is really uh, uh, very powerful and very compelling. So when we're talking about music, music has a very special role to fulfill uh, in terms of social and artistic uh, values within a school system, but it also contributes to an academic life and not only from the standpoint of how it enhances uh, academic studies in, in other areas, but also how it itself is an academic subject that is developing a certain aspect of abstract thinking. I think these are largely uh, kind of social political issues. Uh, when you look at the history of education, uh, it has always been true that the arts have been marginalized uh, and we haven't outgrown that. I mean, we continue to, uh, to do that. I think, you know, a really good case in point is if you look at New York City, here, New York City is considered an artistic capital of the world, and yet if you look at what goes on in the schools, it isn't as good as what is going on in the rest of the country in terms of the arts, in terms of music education, art education, dance education, educational theater. It is um, really substandard. There are many, many schools that have no programs. Uh, Schools that do have programs often have to get them through parent involvement with after school types of things where parents raise additional funding. And I think, you know, for a uh, city that claims to be a cultural capital, for that to be the state of arts education is, you know, really inexcusable. Uh, we have 
uh, the, uh, you know, save the music in our schools, which uh, the music industry has uh, gotten beh behind, and uh, uh, particularly uh, VH1, I guess it is, that has uh, been the uh, inspiration for that program and the power behind it. Uh, that's a very solid program. It's really trying to bring back the idea of uh, music in schools and particularly in the urban settings where, where a lot of the music training has been lost. I would say so. I think it's also doing a disservice to itself. It would be a much richer school system if it was including arts as a vital part and music as a vital part of what the uh, human experience is because when we're talking about education, education ought to be defining what we value the most as the human experience. You know, what is it to be human? What is it to express ourselves humanly? And 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 to uh, express that as strictly things like language arts, social studies, mathematics, is to have a very narrow view of what we are as human beings. Uh, so I think, you know, it isn't only do doing a disservice to the students themselves, but to the whole school system and what we reflect as our values. You know, I think the, the great thing is that uh, music is starting to embrace a world tradition in our time. Uh, I think that there has been a great deal of strength in, in how the Western tradition has been assimilated within uh, music education. But in recent years, you know, certainly within the last decade, there's been a really great awareness of how the music of the world has impacted on the West, that, w that the West has not really developed in a vacuum. And it's interesting to see now the kind of synergy that's taking place between cultures and the way that cultures are impacting. And always, you know, even within the music of the West, the strongest things that have kind of energized music movements have been how the West has encountered other cultures. So if you take like the Paris exhibition, uh, you know, in uh, Debussy's time and the impact that that had on composers and the way it expanded our whole sonic range and our harmonic thinking and melodic ideas that were brought in, it truly transformed it. Or look at how, uh, how the African Americans uh, assimilated a Western tradition and actually transformed it. You know, so it's that encounter with, with uh, different uh, cultures has been the real energy of the West in recent years. And I think that will continue to happen. I was excited to, uh, I've just returned from Korea where I was doing a uh, presentation on the use of Internet 2 in digitizing cultural heritage and doing exchanges of cultural uh, performances where we do simultaneous performances uh, in uh, different cultures. Like we did a demonstration while I was in Korea where uh, musicians at NYU provided music for dancers in Korea. And uh, we did this as about a little 12 minute demo of connecting uh, NYU low theater with uh, the pavilion where we were doing this conference and had this excellent, really gorgeous dance group uh, from Korea that were performing. So uh, all of the participants of the conferences where we were were uh, on coffee break and they were standing around the pavilion and we had the dancers there and then you had screens all over the pavilion where you could see the musicians in uh, New York performing and you could see the dancers and you could hear the music coming from New York. Uh, that kind of interpenetration now of cultures is going to be, I think, the kind of next stage that we'll be seeing happening. And the fact that we can digitize now, that we can, we can capture these kinds of experiences uh, and have them available as a resource and an archive is, is another part of, of what we're doing, you know, in terms of kind of bringing cultures together and, and learning from each other.